You are listening to the SDSU podcast presented by the East Village Times with your hosts Andre Hagberdian and Paul Garrison. Welcome, listeners, back to another episode of the SDSU Podcast. I'm your host, Andre Hagverdian, and we'll be joined shortly by my co-host, Paul Garrison. Today's episode is 112. We did things a little bit differently for this one. You know, a hot topic, a question that gets asked a lot uh, around, you know, San Diego and especially San Diego State football conversations is about San Diego State recruiting local talent in San Diego, how they've done in the past under previous regimes, and how they can improve that moving forward, especially with a new head coach and uh, staff in place, uh, you know, as of three weeks ago. I know it's been a topic we have, Paul and I have talked about on previous episodes when we've interviewed local uh, high school recruits, commits, coaches, you know, we had John Joyner on, about a month ago, uh, now retired, modern day Catholic uh, head coach. Paul's idea was to put together kind of a roundtable panel of uh, high school football coaches in San Diego that can kind of, you know, give us their takes on what they've seen, what they think will work, what hasn't worked, what what they would like to see happen. And uh, we were able to do that. <clears throat> we, uh, we have three people on this panel for this today's uh, interview. Christian Chapman, who's an Aztec for life, uh, former quarterback, San Diego State, who played at Carlsbad High and now coaches at Carlsbad High. Kellen Cobbs, who is the Granite Hills head coach uh, for the team who ended up winning the Open Division San Diego Championship over uh, Lincoln, actually, at Snapdragon Stadium. And then third was Jason Carter, who is an assistant head coach, offensive coordinator at Lincoln. So we got three, we got coaches from three of the four teams that played in the open division semifinals in uh, San Diego this past, you know, month, uh, about a month ago, get their perspective. Now this, this discussion wasn't to be um, overly critical or overly negative about what has happened in the past, but it was really just to, to have the discussion have the open dialogue, which happens with these coaches and players and San Diego State staff probably on the daily. And it was just something uh, we thought would be really good to to get on for a a podcast. Uh, Now, you know, we we spoke to them for about an hour. You know, an hour interview on the SDSC podcast isn't necessarily going to, you know, fix the problem or solve the issue or anything like that. But I thought it was a great conversation. I think you guys will enjoy it. I enjoyed it. There's probably a lot more that can be talked about, discussed, uh, dissected, if you want to say, about this topic. And, you know, maybe this is something we can do uh, more in the future with with other people involved in the San Diego football community. But I thought this one turned out really well. Um, So let's get right to it. Welcome back, guys. Uh, for this episode, we wanted to have a discussion about, you know, recruiting San Diego and how San Diego State can uh, improve or continue their uh, connection to recruiting San Diego. Uh, for this episode, we've got three coaches from the local uh, San Diego teams, three of the teams that played in the Open Division semifinals, uh, Kellen Cobbs, Christian Chapman, and Jason Carter. Um, just for everybody listening, if we can just start by asking each of you, you know, what your position is in high school football, how long you've been in San Diego, and if you have a connection to San Diego State. Uh, coach Cobbs, you want to go first? Yeah, so I've been the head coach at Granite Hills High School for tw- uh, 12 years now. Um, coach on the offensive side of the ball, I actually had the opportunity to intern at San Diego State for three years uh, during the chalk, uh, Chuck Long era um how to you know got got to work with kevin o'connell and ryan lindley and some some good quarterbacks and uh, del miller was the oc at the time um so you know have a little bit of a unique perspective as having kind of seen some of the some of the background work that goes into trying to get kids from san diego and um hopefully be able to build on that 
Appreciate and then, uh, yeah, Chris Chapman played at Carlsbad High, local kid, uh, stayed home, went to San Diego State, won two conference championships with them, had some great talent on our team, um, decided to go back home and coach at my old high school, Carlsbad, been there for the past, you know, five years, been very successful, and then um, had this year one of the, probably the best quarterback in the nation to go to Alabama. So been enjoying it, local kid, hometown kid, just love ball here in this city. Okay, and then I'm Jason Carter. I coach at Lincoln High School. Uh, I'm the offensive coordinator, the di recruiting director also. Um, I also have my dream chasers who I travel with in the offseason, so I get a chance to see all the top talent that come, that's in San Diego, but not just in San Diego, all over. Um, been a, I've been at Lincoln for six, year, six years now, so I'm a former player in you know, Texas and then played with Minnesota Vikings, played with the Panthers, so just, you know, just been trying to help kids all over San Diego, not just at Lincoln, but I've helped kids at Helix, Cathedral, you name it. Uh, uh, I've helped them. So um, that's that's basically it. You know, just to get this conversation started, um, and Christian, you're the hometown hero, so you can go first. Uh, how would you overall evaluate SDSU's performance in recruiting San Diego over the last decade? Uh, I know we've tried to take strides at it in the past. I think the best recipe, obviously, to do it is to win. That's always the easiest thing, right? Just win ball games. That's how you get the kids. Uh, but I put some thought into this. I mean, when you're winning, you know, that's what gets the kids who want to play hometown. I remember when I was getting recruited, they were going to bowl games, right? When you're going to bowl games and you're seeing on the big screen, that's what gets kids fired up. That's why kids want to play for this university. Um, so that's the biggest thing that's been missing, right? Just the winning, you know, and then with the new stadium and then the lackluster is of winning, you're not getting the crowds out there. So when you're getting the kids showing up to the games, you're not seeing the atmosphere that you want when you're trying to go play big time ball after high school. So that, that's kind of where it is right now. I think we all could agree that, you know, you win ball games, you're going to get people in the stadium, you get people in the stadium, kids are going to want to come show them, you know, play ball there. So that's where we're at right now. Um, you know, the other thing I've been, I was thinking about too, um, you know, NIL, right. That's been a huge change in the ball game last five years. It started when I was, you know, getting done in 2018. So how do you maneuver that? I don't know. That's why we're on this, you know, talk today to discuss that, but there's just a few things, you know, we could do better brand new coaching staff. So we'll see. Coach Cobb, you want to go next? Yeah. I mean, I think, in the past, they've, you know, done a good job of trying to go after some of the, the big name guys. Um, you know, I, I think where a little where they could do a little bit better job of is kind of getting those those fringe Pac-12 Mountain West kids to stay home. I know we had a lineman at Granite about six years ago that ended up at Boise State. He's a four year starter for, for him. You know, J.L. Skinner was in that same group. Um, yeah. And for whatever re reason, those two kids ended up at Boise. They, they didn't feel like they were you know, recruited that hard. And, you know, those are the types of guys that I think we got to make sure we land, uh, you know, the, the guys that might be able to pay, you know, Pac-12. I know that's kind of going away, but, um, you know, the, the top end Mountain West kids that are in San Diego, we got to find a way to make sure those guys are, are staying there. You know, the quarterback from Carlsbad that's getting offered from Alabama, we're never going to win those kids. I mean, the beach is great, but, you know, it's a whole different level of football and a whole different <laughs> level of trying to keep a hometown kid home. But, um, you know, I think, kind of just finding a way and a, and a niche to to keep some of those other, you know, uh, local talent guys home. The tough part is like, you know, you, you give a, a kid from Cathedral a chance, he goes out, starts as a true freshman, has a great year for us. And now he's going to get, you know, picked up from UCLA, it sounds like possibly, you know, I think he got offered by like Florida today. So the whole, you know, landscape and, and outlook has changed. Um, and I, you know, I don't, I don't have all the answers for how we're going to be able to attack that, but that's, that's why we're talking tonight, I think. Coach Carter? Yeah, I agree with Kellen, man. The whole college landscape is changing, so then I think you need to adjust. Uh, I think they need to adjust and understand what the rules are, what they can do, what they can't do. But there ain't no way I'm letting uh, – if Julian wants to leave, it's going to be hard for Julian to leave. Like, I'm going to recruit Julian just like we're Alabama. Now, are we Alabama yet? No, but it can start with you. So I, you got to make that kid feel like, hey, everything starts with you. You can be the whole face of San Diego. You can keep these guys home because if you get Julian, 
you're gonna get you're gonna probably get 30 San Diego kids. So the thing is this is like I don't care if Alabama comes in here and recruits Julian, I don't care if Georgia comes in here and recruits them, we're gonna go recruit them too. And the best thing about it, we're closer, you know? And so there shouldn't be no reason why there's not I don't even know if you can do this yet, but I will find out. There shouldn't be no reason why there's not a you know uh, um a big poster in North County, a big post like like the like with Julian and the top kids, yeah, and, and the top kids in the North County. Shouldn't be no reason why it's not in the East County. Why it's not in you know the inner city? Like, ain't no way Keyshawn Smith, Don Chapman, Chris Olave, and these guys all leave a body here. JL Skinner, because all them guys are going to help other teams win. You know, so you got to figure out a way to keep your kids home, and then the best way you can do do your research is. You got to, you know, and, and I think high school coaches got to do a better job of telling the truth about their kids, too. Because there's a lot of coaches that say, well, well, these kids are dogs and these kids are this and this and that. And they don't be like that. And it'd be some, you know, that, and do and it, and it, and it. And there are some kids that are really, really good. But being up front about it, telling the truth about it. But there's no way if I'm coaching in San Diego State, ain't no way I'm letting no kid leave up out of here. Like it's going to be come hell or high water. You got to put on the recruiting you know, hat, and you got to do all these other schools are coming here and taking the kids. And, you know, what I've, what I've seen when they come to Lincoln and Demetrius Sumner does a great job because he's on it. Uh, Ryan Lindley does a great job. He's on it. But I've seen some coaches come in. We'll have Florida in the room. We'll have Georgia in the room. We'll have um, SC or maybe might even be Wyoming or uh, some school in the Pac-12. I've seen them sometimes take a back seat and let them recruit the kids and them mm-hmm. take a backseat to letting them recruit the kid. Ain't no way you gonna come in. You gonna come down to San Diego and think you gonna take? Think we gonna take a backseat to you? You in our hometown. We're not gonna let that happen. And so I think they got to be more aggressive on the home front of like going after their kids and identifying who are their kids and who can make who can make a difference. Because I know like right now they're down, so it shouldn't be no reason why you don't sell that pitch of, hey, we're gonna start with our hometown kids. We're not letting our kids out. Let letting our kids get out of here because there's enough hometown talent to make this place really, really special. You know, uh, I know Kellen and Kellen and them got some big boys over there. Uh, you know, calls bet. I was going to have some big boys, you know, you want some dogs and all this other stuff, you know, where to find them at, like, you, you know, where to go, like, but you got to do a good point of selling it. And if you don't sell it, you don't make those kids feel wanted. And if you timid, your recruiting going to be timid. So you got to do a better job of just being understanding what the, what the plan is and how you really going to attack it. You know, it all starts with your plan and how you're going to attack. So I just want to be able to see if I'm hearing this right, you know, in, in not so much talking about going forward, but talking about maybe some in the past. Um, are, are you all saying that there's this feeling that that maybe San Diego State hasn't been aggressive enough with yeah, trying to get down in front of it? But yeah, I mean, they, 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 man, I, and I'll do I'll give him this like Lindley. He's he's quick to you know, he wants to put that off on the board. Some quick to put that off on the board to let those they want to offer you first. But. Don't once you offer that's the job is not done. Like, you know, like you gotta you gotta stay on this. Like you gotta stay on the kid. Um, and I think like, you know, like when they do that, you know, because I mean, I was I was once one of these kids that was in that, you know, I was getting recruited by 50 schools and I, I knew exactly like the ones who gave me the most attention, the ones who stayed on me, the ones who built that relationship, the ones who created a sense of belief, a sense of trust, that's where I was going. And I think that's like that for any kid. Every kid want to know, can they trust you? Can they believe in you? And can you inspire them? If you can do all those three things, then you got them. And so, but you, that don't mean you just stop recruiting them, though, because you sent them an offer. Like, I think that's, I don't think that's a good look. Yeah, one, one thing you said, Coach Carter, and I think it rings true, is San Diego State's biggest ad set here is we're local. The kids are local. You know, some of these kids, when they go to another school and take a visit, they're probably only going to go see one game. They could go and see every game at San Diego State. You know, and when they do, you better roll out the red carpet every time. Exactly. Exactly. You know, maybe put them up in a suite and that billboard idea, you know, doing those things and consistently doing it instead of just, you know, handing them the offer. I think that's how you do it. And then and you do with one year, you get all the top kids maybe for one year or some of the top kids. That makes other kids want to jump in the pool and be like, what am I missing out on? And being that hometown kid. And, and I, I hate to cut you off, but like, I mean, uh, that's a great point. But guess what? When those kids, when they go to those other schools and they bounce back, guess what they do? They want to come back to San Diego State as if they're the second, second choice. 
we're not, we're not going to be the second choice no more. We're going to be the first choice, and we're going to make you feel like we can win with you. And we, we like, you know, Ratcliffe did a great job this year. It's some other kids that, that are from San Diego that did a great job. But the, the deal is, okay, who are the necessary who, – who can we not afford to let leave here? Like, we got to figure out who, who are those kids are right now, and we need to have them in camp. We need to make sure we're reaching out to them and seeing them. We do need – I don't I don't know if they have an NIL situation set up yet, but, like, at the end of the day, like, I'm I'm with the NIL, and I'm, like, on the fence about it. I think you should set it up. I mean, you got you – got, you should have to earn it. You know, like, you're just giving money away. Like, you're giving money away promising kids. This kid's just saying that they're going to college, and they got NIL deals, and they ain't getting no money. So you falling for that okie doke and that, but it's like – Figure out who the who the guys are who you cannot let leave. Like, like I said, okay, Julian is the top dog right now. He's the highest recruited quarterback in the country. Okay, we're gonna shoot our shot, Julian. We're gonna keep on shooting our shot. You're gonna get tired of us, you know. And we're gonna build a relationship, and we're gonna give you a chance. Okay, you're gonna go to Alabama, Julian. Guess what? Let's look at who they got on on the roster. Let's look who they got on the roster. They got five of the top fifteen quarterbacks in that class. Like it's it's five quarterbacks that are ranked. In the top 10, top 15, um, when they was in their classes. Let's look at San Diego State. Who they got on, as their quarterback right now? Nobody knows. But I can tell you if Julian Sand knows, I know I know Carlsbad is going to bring a crowd. I know the San Diego local is going to be there. So, Julian, let's start with you. Let's see how we can get you home. What, what, is, what will it take for us to get you home and give you a shot? Because you, you probably might have a chance to start here all four years. So then we got that, and then we're going to go try to get – Who's the top running back? So I know I'm, I'm going to go look at those guys at Granite Hills. I know Lincoln got a pair of guys. I know Kevin Allen can run the rock. I know Jackson Daniels. I know uh, there's some, like I said, it's a bunch of talent here. And if you start with your hometown kids, you can kind of paint this San Diego versus the world. And that kids are going to jump into that and buy that anyway, because it's actually San Diego versus everybody at that point. Yeah. That's just my two cents. No, it's perfect. It's a great segue. Coach Cobbs, uh, I want to ask a little bit about Demand White. Um, he he committed to Florida State and announces that a commitment will be signing on Wednesday. Um, right. You told me last week that, you know, when they – when San Diego State, you know, was with the with under Brady Hoke in the three three five, he wasn't a fit. Um, but that is – once they switched to the four two five, they were, like, all in on him. And they go from not recruiting him to being his finalist or one of the finalists, you know, getting a visit, et cetera. Do you really think that that's the best approach – is finding guys who are local and then asking, are they part of your system? Or is it, hey, let's get the best players in and then figure out where they're going to play later? You know, I, th I think our defense that we've ran in the past is kind of so specific. You need some specific type of players to, to fit those types of roles that, you know, I kind of understood it at the time. But honestly, to me, I think you just go out and you collect as many football players as you can. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that, you know, Jason's, you know, trying to hint at is like, just just get the best guys and then football is going to fall into place. If Demarion's one of the best pass rushers in our in our county, right, have a third down package for him early in, in his career, you know, and, and get him in, get him hooked, get him, you know, bought in. Um, and, you know, if they had that kind of approach with the, with the last staff, I think he probably would have wanted to stay home. Uh, that being said, Fresno State's been on. They were the first ones to offer him. Um, I think that's one of the things San Diego State kind of falls on sometimes is they're a little bit slower on on some of the kids. We had a a, a defensive line uh, lineman a few years ago that went to UCLA. San Diego State did, waited to offer him until UCLA offered him. It's like, well, why aren't we first on that kid? You know, we have a freshman quarterback right now that played out. You know, outstanding. It's like. Offer the kid now. What do you have to lose? Start building that relationship now, right? Um, and hopefully you can convince him to stay home in, in three or four years if you if you constantly, you know, had constant contact with those guys. Um, I think that's I think one of the things we kind of wait a little bit too long um on, on certain kids. You know, talking talking about building a fence. I know one of the things that happened, and I think Christian, this might have been right around when you came in. They went out and they signed five dudes from Oceanside you know, off one class. And then they made it a point like, Hey, we're, we're going to take some guys that maybe wouldn't, we wouldn't have taken in years past. It's like, we, we don't care. We're going to get the fight. The ocean side at the time was the best team in the County. It's like, we're getting those guys are staying at home. And I think that led to more guys down the road, staying home, which, which then led to the, you know, the trophies that are sitting behind him, you know, and some of those, those rings back there uh, to some bull wins. So, you know, I think if they, they kind of get back to that approach a little bit, um, I think they'll have some success. I do understand that it's, it's, a different 
way of recruiting now. You know, I, I was told today that one of our DBs that that they had offered, you know, uh, a couple months back that, you know, they're, they're having to go to portal kids now for, for linebacker because they had so many guys leave. And, um, you know, I, I get it. Uh, I think that's an NCAA thing that they got to kind of address and look at. I think there's got to be per school has to offer a minimum number of high school kids or else we're just going to be in this same cycle of, of kids come, go, go and portal and, you know, got to find a one year fix and things like that. And the, the development that you used to see, I don't know if it'll, it's quite there um, anymore, but you know, that's a, that's an NCAA thing. That's not just a San Diego state issue. So it's a whole, that's a whole nother topic. First Carter, we, uh, we get as, as people in the media, man, we get everybody's complaints. Uh, it's just, I don't know why they feel like Andre and I are safe places to be able to give their complaints. But we get we get it all the time, and I'm almost embarrassed to ask this, but it's come up so many times that I'd like you, if you would, be able just to set the record straight. There is this notion out there that the coaches at Lincoln do not like San Diego State, and that they intentionally don't try to send their kids there. Could could you address that? Because I'm sure you've you're smiling. I mean, you've heard this too. I mean, it, to me, it's ridiculous, but like I said, it comes up a lot. So I wanted to ask you about it here. You're on mute, Coach. Okay, sorry about that. I think that's the biggest crock of BS there is out there. You know, and, it, and here's why. I was, and I, they, they say the same thing when they say, uh, well, you know, don't go to Lincoln for these type of reasons, too. They'll, they'll say the same thing. You know, everyone says that type of stuff. Well, Lincoln this and Lincoln that. And little is this. If you ask Ryan Lindley how many times I blew up his phone and say, hey, man, you got to take this kid. If you ask Demetri Sumner, I can send you my text message, my text log right now. Take this kid, take this kid, take this kid. Jackson Daniels is a dog. Jaden Mangini, I just called for him, um, you know, a few days ago. He's on my dream chases. But, you know, like, I, I'm trying to get them to take Jamarion Herbert, number six, the DM for us. Like, uh, I asked him to take Jamar, uh, Jerome Roberts, and they told him they had another guy. And then the other guy dropped him, and then they still didn't take him. And I'm like, all he did was just rack up. And everybody in the county knew who he, Jerome Roberts was. So, yeah. no, I actually – and then, you know, what people don't know is this. I go sit in the meetings with them when they have offensive meetings. I go I go listen. I want, I want to learn. I always try to learn as much as I possibly can, even though I played the game. I still want to learn. So Brady Hoke, he would tell you. I'm, I, I reach out to him. Hey, Brady, you got to take this guy. Like, take this guy. Like, Hunky Cooper, when he was here, I talked to all those guys about trying to take our guys. I'm always going to start with our guys first. And then when they ask me, who do you think about these, what do you think about these kids? Then I tell them, Hey, this place got some real athletic guys. This place got some really athletic guys. You need to go check these kids out. We've seen these players up close and personal. I've seen them. I played, like our kids have played against them. We like this kid. You know what I'm saying? Like this kid is, you know, is legit. So I, you know, that let's just debunk all of that right now. Cause like, I don't know why they think that Lincoln don't like them. Like Chris, Chris Fewell went there. Uh, yeah. I tried, like I, I was, I had him set up for them to take Keyshawn Smith when he bounced back from Miami. I had him set up for the Tech Jaleel Tucker and, and and things just didn't fall through. But I, I I think because it was just, you know, in my opinion, there's a much laid back approach to to San Diego State than what it is to like if you go you go to the schools in the South and like even when Cristobal was at Oregon, man, Cristobal was he was putting a he was putting like a, a full court press on our guys and not letting our guys like even think about going to else. He had our whole football team ready to commit to Oregon because of the full court press that he put on them. And like, if they're seeing that type of recruitment from those type of guys, and then, you know, the guys at San Diego state, not, not Lindley and not Summer, but from some of the other guys and they laid back, you know, like that, why, why would you want to go to a place that's, not recruiting you like the other schools are, have showed that they're going to recruit you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would, like, why would, like, they would recruit a kid from LA more than what they would recruit a kid from San Diego. Like, you couldn't tell me Kyle Phillips, Kyle Phillips, can you imagine Kyle, Phil, Kyle Phillips, uh, Chris Alave, all these guys in this, on the same, as the same receivers and they, they get in the ball, like, man, like, tell me what, like, they, they could have been nationally known. They could have put San Diego State on the map for like some of the best receivers at that time, you know, and like safeties at Don Chapman and JL Skinner. Can you imagine them guys playing together in college? Like it's, and it's, it's some other guys in the past, their Cameron Thomas, yeah, he stayed home, but it's like, you, you could have had other guys that stayed there, you know, like 
if you got, oh, I can go on and on about this stuff, but uh, you know, I, I, that, that's not true about Lincoln. Lincoln. We try to get our kids to go to every college in the in the in the country. So if you recruit our kids, I'm trying to send our kids to college, and that's and, and all the college. Ask Lily next time you see him and ask somebody. Like yeah, he he almost overdoes it trying to sell our kids to them. <laughs> all right, so I don't want to hear it anymore, listeners. No more. It's done. Yeah, put it to bed. It's done. Um, Chris, Christian, I know we'll go to you because you're a quarterback and, um, uh, you played quarterback at San Diego state, but, you know, we obviously talked a lot about Julian and, and I don't, we don't want to single him out. We can talk about quarterbacks in general, but, um, you know, the last local quarterback who committed to San Diego state out of high school, um, I believe was Noah Tumblin from Mira Mesa. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but now was it Mark played- Salazar? Was it Mark um, Salazar? He came in as a transfer, yeah, but, right? No, Mark yeah. Salazar was a quarterback, right? He came yeah, in. Yeah. Mark yeah, Salazar. Yeah. One. Yep. And I know Lucas Johnson transferred back, too. But mm-hmm. out of high school, I think it was Noah. Uh, now he's going entering the draft as a cornerback. Yeah. You know, a lot of what we heard about why they're not attracting quarterbacks and wide receivers is because the offense is run heavy, right? We know what Donnell Pumphrey did. We know what Rashad Penny did, Jawan Washington. Do is there? Do you buy that theory that quarterbacks didn't want to go to San Diego State because they weren't going to be able to pass the ball and put up numbers and look good to enter the draft? Or do you think that that was something that was just misconstrued? I think it's a little misconstrued, just a little bit, right? I mean, you can't pick the system you go and play in. You know, you're going to go play ball if you go play ball. Um, I think a lot of it had to do, you know, with the not winning at times. And then the inconsistency of the offense, right? I think we went through a lot of changes over the years. So the, you know, the chemistry and the dynamic wasn't there. We we still were, you know, run heavy. Yes, that might, you know, play in the mind of some people. But overall, if you're trying to go to college, you're going there to win, right? So I I think it does get misconstrued. Um, For me, when I was coming out of high school, you know, I wasn't even really looking at the offense. You know, I was just looking to go play football one for my hometown but two just go somewhere make an impact get an education you know and then play ball when it comes do you think that with sean lewis coming in it's kind of a piggyback where he is kind of attracting these quarterbacks already outside of san diego that that could change in in the near future yeah, I think I think one seeing the kid that recently, you know, committed, he made a relationship with that kid, right? I think he um I don't know the situation, but I guarantee you he's been talking to that kid since day one of recruiting to get him going there. One, could just cuz he thought that kid would fit perfectly in his offense, but two, this their probably chemistry was great. I actually went and looked at the kid's highlight tape, you know, and that kid can sling the rock. I'm very excited to see him in this offense. Um, But let's not expect day one, you know, that this, you know, team is going to be, you know, on pace and that we're going to be out there gun blazing 50 point games. That's not how football works. It takes time to get the dudes, implement your offense, build a culture there. And then, you know, one, two, maybe three years down the road, we'll start being consistent and playing that type of ball. Yeah, you know, Sean Lewis has been on the job for less than three weeks, but, you know, they've claimed to be more focused locally. Um, at Coach Cobbs and all of you, but starting with Coach Cobbs, have have you seen that? Has that is that backed up by their actions so far? Yeah, I mean, I think the second day he was in San Diego, he was on our campus. Uh, Ryan brought him out, and you know, I'll, I'll I'll say one thing: Ryan's done a great job of trying to you know bridge the gap between the old staff and the new staff. I, I'm hoping he finds you know f- find lands somewhere here because he's been recruiting his ass off for you know when when those those changes that did happen. He was, he didn't, you know, let down at all. So he, uh, uh, him and him and coach Lewis, like I said, we're on, on we're on our campus. The, I think it was the second day he was on the job. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's proof right there that he's willing to try and put in some work and, and get some local kids. I think he's walking into a roster where, you know, they have some holes and I know we had, we had quite a few, you know, people hit the transfer portal before he even, um, was announced as the head coach. So he's got a, you know, you know, find some, uh, find some older guys and, and a good mix of younger guys to bring in. But, you know, he going back to the piece where, you know, the, the kid decommitted from Colorado, it was very clear that he had built a relationship with that, that quarterback. And, um, you know, he was very up, up front with our guy. Um, 
and just said, Hey, we're, we're going to evaluate in every area. We're going to take our time on quarterbacks. And, you know, that's a position you can't miss on. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I hope hopeful that he'll, you know, continue to recruit San Diego as hard as, as he was right out of the gate and um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, no, I, I second that as well. He was at Carlsbad as well. So I've seen some good things, you know, um, it's still young, right? <laughs> Hasn't even been a few months here. Uh, but I like what I see thus far. It, it's not any tale of what's going to be happening as the season goes, but I think they're doing some good things as of right now. Yeah, I think Sean Lewis, I, I, say, I kind of disagree with you on that one about, like, it's going to take some time. I don't think it's going to take two or three years. Like, he, he's pretty good when it comes to offense. And, like, he was, you know, on our campus, like, in, in the summer when he was with uh, Colorado. Uh, I mean, not the summer, but the spring with Colorado. And then he, when he got the job, they, they came over and spent some time with us, and they did you know, reiterate that they were going to be recruiting locally. But he's going to have to take that approach where he got to build right now. And so if for every guy that they lose, then they're going to have to replace in that portal. And so I don't think he can spend as much time recruiting San Diego locally, like in first year, because he got to get some wins or he got to keep that fan base somewhat happy. Uh, and so, like, he's going to have to go get some guys because that, that uh, AJ, that was AJ McDuffie or Duffy, that Duffy kid can play too. Yeah. And so, um, you know, he's, there's a highlight that's circ- you know, kind of like circulating through the internet that, you know, when he was at Florida State, that that highlight he had in practice, yeah, uh, that yeah, kid can generate that. If, that if that kid can generate anything like that in, in a game, like, and he and he can get some receivers to throw the ball to, it's going to be instant offense. Now they're going to have to get their defense ready to go, and they're going to have to do all this other stuff. But I don't think you recruit locally in your first year when you're coming in because, like, you might you might you, you probably can go get ten solid kids right now. You can, or you can say, like, hey, we want to take at least seven, the top seven to ten kids in San Diego, if we can take them, if we can get them. If we can't get them, then let's take the top five. And then, you know, you're going to have to build your class like you got to build your class. But, I mean, I think they're going to do a good job. And Sean is a real cool dude. So, um, you know, they just got to – see, I think you can't miss – they say you can't miss some quarterbacks, but every college coach, every college coach say that, and they miss a lot. Uh, when it comes to that, <laughs> so I think you can't miss on the on the on the best talent available. Like the best talent available, you know, you take the the best kids and you can plug them into your system and get them ready to play at you know at any point. Like you you don't have to build it to what you want to run, but you can take the best kids and get them ready to play. Yeah, in terms of just looking at the top five, six guys in San Diego ranked by twenty four seven. Right, Julian's going to Alabama. Demarion is committed to Fresno State, uh, but Anthony McMillan, Isaiah Buxton, and uh, Will C. and Freeney, they're all committed to San Diego State. So they do have three of the top five, and they're in the mix for the sixth guy, an offensive lineman, Josh Glanz from East Lake. So, in that sense, they are they do have some of the top guys in San Diego. Uh, it's just you know uh, we'll see how those six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys play out. I think also too, if you're gonna recruit the top five or six, like, go get, like, Kellen made a good point. Go get guys that can, that you can see that actually have potential of playing right now. Mm-hmm. Don't go get, don't, don't go waste your time. Like, that, that kid that Kellen got, you, he, he can get off in the third down package and go rush the quarterback. He's long, he's athletic, he's fast. You know, like, they'll, they'll work with him. He'll get the extra teaching that he needs to get. He'll get brought up to speed, but you can get him in there. He gets four games before he had to register. Uh, but you get guys that can help you right away. You don't you don't just go wasting on offers on guys that can't help you. Yeah. In my opinion. So at the uh, when we got to meet um, Sean Lewis, you know, uh, we had to participate in the the media part of it, and and I was asking softballs like, you know, how's the how's the weather treating you? Do you know how to surf? You know, easy stuff. Andre comes in with with the. Uh, you know, people don't say people was insane that the staff hasn't been recruiting San Diego very well. What are you going to do to change that? And um, his response, his response was basically, please don't hold anything. We like the coaches not to hold anything negative against us as the new staff. But my question to the three of you and, and just jump in, whoever feels like they want to start. How long does Sean Lewis have and his staff have before the reputation is hit? Does that make sense? And and how long of a grace period do you think like the local coaches 
and the people who are connected to these kids are going to give the, the, the new staff to be able to make their mark um, before they start going and saying, ah, it's all the same promises, but they're not following through. I guess I'll start. I don't like, I don't know, talking about the, getting the pitchforks out already. Um, you know, give him, give him some time. Um, hey, tell Andre, man, I, I had the good, I had the nice questions, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, it's going to take some time. Again, we haven't really touched on it that much, but the NIL landscape, I do want to see what that's all about. Um, they rolled out a thing called Aztec link. It's called Azteclink.com. It's where they're trying to not give kids, you know, money, but trying to find them opportunities to get money. And that's the first step. I know J.R. Tolver's running that brigade with some other people helping him. So we'll see what that, you know, beholds. You know, if we're able to, you know, help some kids out and maybe snag some kids because we got NIL backing, NIL backing, that might be a way to do it. Um, it is fairly new. It's going to be obviously a lot harder for us than those other big time universities. But that, you know, you need to get the fans bought in, people bought in, the boosters bought in to help on that aspect of it. I don't have the answer for that because I wasn't even getting that when I was playing, but that could be something that could help us in the recruiting game. Uh, Kellen, you going or you want me to go? Go for it. Um, I, I, you've seen all these other coaches come in and win right away because they're, they're hitting that portal. Uh, they're hitting the portal in there. Am I okay? Yeah, they're hitting the portal, and they're finding guys that can help them win right away. Um, and you know, it's the good and the bad to the portal because you haven't seen those kids. Because some people have been in the portal for four and five years. You know what I'm saying? And it's like guys that are, you know, active. I think they got to do their real. Like I think they have to do their due diligence and turn over every piece of film. And then sometimes it's not you're not gonna get the the four and the five star four and the five star guards. But I can tell you this. J.J. Watt wasn't a four and a five star guy. Uh, you know, it's a Russell Wilson. It's a bunch of guys that wasn't. So you got to do your part to watch that film and don't like and turn over every leaf that you can to like make sure you find the right guys that are right for your program and fit what you want to do. That's going to play hard every single time. And it's going to sell out the NIL situation. Like that stuff is a mess. And, you know, I do believe the kids should get paid, but I think they should get paid on how they produce you know, and getting a chance to produce because, like, what's happening is this is guys just playing one year and jumping in the portal. I'm like, well, you ain't done nothing. But because you've got a little bit of film, coaches are taking you. But you wasn't getting recruited like this when you were coming out of high school. And so um, because you played a few games and you've done some things, like now you're a big-time recruit, uh, you know, that's tough. But hopefully I think he can get it. with the, what, what he does on offense and you've seen what he did with – uh with Shallow, his first, I mean, with Shador, his first few games, now, if he can get everybody to buy into that, which I think he will learn from the, what happened in Colorado, learn from what he did before, I think he will fix it and get it to where he wants to get it. You know, it's not like he, you know, he's going to play against some good talent, but I think he can, you know, San Diego State has done a good job in the past of, of winning games when they had the right recipe. You know, when they was running the ball and playing good defense, they was winning. Um uh, and so if you can put up, you know, some good points and play good defense, you can win the game. So I don't think it's going to take – I don't think it's going to take long. I mean, you should see a, you should see a huge significance in the offense and how they play this year, you know. And then next year you should really see it. Coach Cobbs, uh, if I if, – if, so what I'm trying to ask, and I, and, I, and I don't think I asked it very well, um, how long does Sean Lewis and his staff have to be able to to kind of forge their own identity as recruiters in San Diego? Uh, I think they got to hit, they've already hit the ground running pretty good. Um, you know, I think it's going to be huge the, the April, spring. I, I think our, our class of 25 in San Diego is maybe a little bit deeper um, than, the, than the class of 24 was. So, you know, I think they need to make a big impact with some of those local kids. I think for right now, they're going to have to go in because of some of the reasons they just talked about. They've got to find some kids that can help them win right now, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, I, I I go out to spring practices every year, and I, I remember talking to Ryan at the end of their coaches clinic last year, and it was, you know, we they had <laughs> they needed some receiver pieces in the portal, and I don't think they quite hit on some of those guys. Um, Coach Lewis is going to have to hit on some of those guys right away to, to get this going in the right direction. Um, but in terms of them, you know, establishing themselves as recruiters, I think it's just, you know, got to do a good job of, you know, taking the approach of getting the uh, the best talent that they can get. Um, 
you know, there's, there's a lot of guys across the County, a lot of guys in S South orange County as well, that, you know, that, that they got to be trying to go full court press on some of these kids. And, you know, I, I know what originally turned it for coach Hoke, like I said earlier was, was, you know, going and sign those five kids from motion side. And then, you know, a lot of the local guys just wanted to stay put and, and, um, you know, if I'm them right now and, you know, looking at quarterback stuff, obviously Lincoln's got one of the best guys in the class of 2025. I don't know what they can do to try and persuade him to, you know, get off the Oregon duck commitment or, or, or not, but, you know, one of those things, I think playing time early in your career is a good sell selling point, uh, especially with how NIL stuff is going. You know, it seems like guys that are getting some tape are going to go get paid, which makes it tough on San Diego state. Cause you know, some of those guys are going to get plucked from us if they do play early, but I think you also can get some of the top end talent um, by having that availability to play early in your career. All right. So it's a very similar question, but just a little bit more like unsolicited advice. If uh, any of the SDSU coaches are listening, what is like for all of you, what is one practical technique, one practical idea that you could see them adopt that you think would, would pay some dividends as far as recruiting? Uh, Christian, we'll start with you. Yeah, I touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, just, you know, getting the kids to the every game, right? You know, rolling out that red carpet. That's the first thing. Get in front of them as much as you can. Build that relationship from week one, even before the season, spring. You know, get them into as many things as you can. Um, you know, meet their family. Get close, right? Everyone likes being personable. Um, if you can do that, you can probably win the kid more often than not. So I think doing that, I mean – when I played too at Carlsbad and even when I committed to San Diego State and I had the successes that I had, it kind of created a pipeline for Carlsbad, right? Troy Cassidy followed suit. Zach Thomas followed suit. Cam Thomas came after that. Guys that were really big time program guys that helped us win football games. So when it starts from there and you, you know, build that pyramid up just like that, that's what kind of brings on the years of winning. So just those, just that little thing can help probably a lot in the long run. Yeah, I think, you know, they, they got to do a good job of just staying on the top programs in San Diego County. Um, you know, one of the approaches I think that they could try and take too is is maybe focus it a little bit on those fringe kids um, and trying to get some of some of the more lo local guys to maybe think about walking on, you know, go go after a, a Carl's bad receiver that's maybe a little undersized like Josh Bell and say, hey, you know, we're going to be able to develop you, stick around, stick with us. We might have some scholarship money down the road. Um, and, and try and convince some of those guys that are maybe taking some FCS um, opportunities to try and get them to stay home. You know, for, for me, I, I got, I think one of the best safeties in the state of California has been a four-year starter for us. Um, but, you know, he's a 5'10 safety that's not getting looked by quite everybody. Um, to me, they, they should be all over that kid as a walk-on. Uh, he's got great grades. He's a great program guy, you know. Uh, San Diego kid that they could keep in town. And I, I truly think that those guys can help us win football games. You know, looking back at some of our receivers, you know, Jesse Matthews recently was one of the, one of our best wideouts and, you know, he was a walk on from Christian high. So I know there's kids like that too, throughout the County that, you know, maybe they're not going to land, you know, some of the, some of the top D one guys, you know, consistently, but maybe take an approach at, at that too, of trying to build some of that, some of those connections throughout the high school where, you know, maybe we're not willing to take an offer or a chance on a kid that's a little bit undersized right now as a staff coming in, but Hey, here's a walk on opportunity. We'd love to have you. We'd love to keep you in San Diego. You know, it costs them nothing. Um, you know, in terms of roster size, once the, you know, once school starts, I think they can have pretty much anybody in, in camp that they want or, you know, on the team as they want. I know there's limitations during camp and scholarship limitations and things like that. But as far as a walk on from San Diego, um, you know, I'd be, you know, there's, there's guys throughout the County where they, you know, they've kind of fit that mold. Um, and I think they should try and maybe think about going after some of those guys. And then eventually some of those guys might add in some of those gaps where you're getting kids that consistently transferring out. Um, you know, some of those guys might be bought in as program guys, cause you gave them a chance where some of the other, you know, division one schools weren't. And can you ask that question one more time so I can make sure I answer it properly? Absolutely. So just um, what it would be one piece of advice that you would give to the SDSU staff that could that could help them do a little bit of a better job uh, recruiting San Diego? Okay. I think one thing that they do that's pretty cool is they do like the hometown heroes, right? But I think you have your hometown heroes, and that's that's you can still do that. 
but you need to figure out who the hometown changers are, you know, and who that meaning, meaning who can change the game for you. And so that might be a list of 10 to 15 players. And you you get those 10 to 15 players somewhere, somehow you got to get them. If you do hometown heroes, you got to figure out something or something else to get them on campus all at the same time. And it needs to be a cool PowerPoint, a cool, like you got to go above and beyond to sell them on here's why you should come here, you know, and you recruit them and you make, you know, because it might be a kid at an offensive line spot. It might be a wide receiver. It might be. But if you get all these kids at one time, like that you feel like they can, like that they can uh, change the game for you and make plays for you. Like you can't let those guys out. Like, I, like it's almost like you kind of, you know, you do a parody or something like when you come in and you lock the gates or lock the doors, you got the chains on locks and say, man, we're not letting you guys out of here. You know, we're going, we're going, we're going to make sure we recruit you guys and you guys are going to change the face of San Diego football. You know, I mean, San Diego state football. And I think it's that approach that you got to, you know, you got to sell it to the kids. If you don't sell it or if you're not, you know, committed to doing it, then they're going to feel like you're not committed to doing it. But when you put everybody in the room together and say they're hometown heroes, some of those kids know who can play and who can't play. You know, <laughs> like a lot of those kids do. They know they know from day one, like, oh, that, yep, mm-mm, that kid ain't good like that. And so, you know, like, but if you put the, you put those legitimate, those dogs in the room, and those 15, 10, 10 to 15, or 7 to the, whatever you got to put in the room, every kid knows who can play. Every kid knows who can play. And they played against those kids. And they said, yeah, he can go. Okay, he can go. And then they start recruiting each other. And that's what you want. I mean, that, that's what I would do. That's interesting. So it's not just recruiting and forming a relationship, but finding a way to kind of recruit them as a group and say, let's all yeah. do this together. Yeah. Why not? No, it's a great idea. Great idea. Like, you know, because like, I mean, if you think about it, you know, like um, – um, that's what Bama does when they get those. They, that's what Alabama, Texas A and M, all those guys. They get those guys on certain recruiting parties from all over the nation, and they bring them in at the same time. They have a recruiting part. They, they have a recruiting day where they got the twenty-five five stars there, whatever it may be. You know, ten five stars there, and they all in their commitment together and saying, "You guys can win us a national championship. You guys can do this. You guys can do that." Well, then those kids start, you know, drinking the drinking the water or whatever and then next thing you know that picks up steam you know and if you can do that and get them to sign on that first signing day then you you win it how much That's do you guys do. think how much do you guys think power five status plays into these decisions i mean marcus ratcliffe when he was interviewed after he jumped entered in the portal he said i know i can play at a power five level i want that challenge i want to be in that Obviously, San Diego State was thinking they were going to be in a Power Five, maybe up until August, when kind of the Pac-10, you know, fell apart. How much of that is a conversation with the kids that are being recruited by the Power Five and San Diego State? Um, anyone? Well, they're, going, answer? they're going to use that, but just like this, Marcus, Marcus Radcliffe. Like, what happens if Marcus Radcliffe doesn't go and do what he needs to do, and he was a starter here, where he would have got those reps and been an even better player? You know, the next year, an even better player his junior year. I mean, like the NFL is, I think his goal is to get to the NFL. You know, hopefully he's get his degree and get to the NFL. But what happens is you see the Patriots just drafted two years in a row. They drafted someone from Division Two. Mm-hmm. So it don't matter where you play football. At. Like the deal is like, where are you going to go and get, get developed at? What Mark is going to do, Mark is going to go there. And what they're not telling Mark is, is, guess what? We got three more players coming in that look just like you. That might be faster. That might be smarter they might be more athletic you know and so you might get a chance to be the starting guy but you mess up guess what now that guy who's smarter and faster he's gonna get a chance to do the same thing that you was doing and he might not give you his job back and so you got to be careful when you're betting on yourself I mean I always think it's great that you bet on yourself but I think like sometimes like the grass ain't always greener that's just my two cents Uh, yeah, when it comes to power five and, you know, if it weighs on a kid's in his recruitment, of course, right? I mean, if I go and tell Julian, right, is Alabama the same atmosphere at this time? If we're taking a snapshot of Aztec football and Crimson Tide football, 
you know, he's going to pick Alabama at this time, 10 out of 10 times. Now we're, what we're talking about is how do you lure those kids? All right. It's winning, right? If he sees a winning program, something he could be proud of going to that school, of course, he's going to, you know, at least think about going to San Diego state, but it, it's going to be hard. Uh, it, you know, we can, we can say all this, right. It's at the end of the day, it's hard. It's at the end of the day, it's going to be one when you're with those kids one-on-one -on -one, looking them in the eye, you know, not making false promises. Right. And, and that's where it's going to start. So. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously for forever, there's a reason why the PAC 12 didn't want SDSU to join the PAC 12, right? It's because they, they could have that recruiting trip in, in Southern California over San Diego state and say, Hey, come to USC, come to UCLA, come to Arizona state where PAC 12, they're not. Um, so I think that, you know, ki kids are going to want to compete at the highest level. Um, I think you want kids that want to compete at the highest level, but you know, like Jason said, also, if you have an opportunity to play and get film, um, you know, we're playing good schools. It's not like we're, you know, some some bottom level uh, feeder program or anything like that. Like we're going to go out and play, you know, a tough non-conference schedule, play some of those, you know, uh, the Oregon States, Oregon's of the world, Washington States, all those types of uh, teams. So you're going to get, you know, an opportunity to play against top talent. Um, and, and the way the game's going now, it's, you know, talent's moving around so much that I think it's going to kind of balance, bounce itself out a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, it is a, definitely a chip that's used against San Diego state in recruiting. I mean, I'd be lying to you if, it, if, if I didn't say it wasn't. Um, last question for me, and I hope I can frame this correctly um, with all of the movement and conference realignment, um, Kids used to be able to leave San Diego and go to like Arizona and they go to Arizona and then they come back during their Arizona career and they play in California a whole bunch of times because they would play, you know, Cal, Stanford, USC, UCLA. Now a kid goes to Arizona and he may have never play in California again. Do you think that like because of the way conference realignment has moved, the fact that UCLA, USC, are going to be playing on the East Coast, you know, half the time. Um, do you think that 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 idea of being local, staying local, um, in a weird way, was even highlighted a little bit because of all of the movement, especially the way these kids aren't going to be able to play in their home state anymore? Uh, I'll, I'll start. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Right. I mean, I, what I do know is Hawaii, they do that all the time. Right. They're always traveling and playing games far away. Now, does that play in the mind of an athlete? You know, when your conference is playing, you know, in different areas, I'm not sure. You know, it is new. Right. I mean, when are they starting to do that next year, next couple of years? That's going to start to roll out. So we'll see if it weighs on the kid. I don't think at this time it does um, just from the landscape we're in. I think kids think short term. <laughs> they don't usually think long term for the most part. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. I don't, me personally, I don't even think it matters. I mean, like at the end of the day, like they got to go play, right? Like, uh, and they growing up, they're becoming young men, young adults. So at the end of the day, like they never promised you that you was going to get to play in your home state anyway, like that. They just said, come play college football. You know, we got, we're giving you an opportunity, giving you a chance to showcase your skills. So, uh, for me, I don't even think it really matters. It's always good when you can go back and play in front of your hometown, but uh, even playing in California. But at the end of the day, it's football. Yeah, I think kids, you know, enjoy playing in front of their friends and family, but I don't think it weighs on many of their decisions. Um, you know, honestly, parents are usually getting flown out by programs anyways now if it's a, you know, a road game and a, a lot of families are making that commitment to go watch their kids anyways. So, playing in, in state, I don't think changes that by, by any means. Last question before we let you guys get out of here. You know, we talked about NIL. Christian mentioned Aztec Link. You know, you guys fundraise for your schools. You know, does Aztec Link tap into San Diego football culture to help with what they're doing? Or is that something that they should think about or consider doing in the future? For high school football? Yeah, but like using that football culture to help uh, SDSU players that are in 
in, at SDSU through Aztec Link. Is that something that could be part of part of their their pitch? I think the job of the AD right now is to go out and and own the city. I mean, Chargers left. Right. It's <laughs> we got a brand new stadium. It's now is if we're ever going to jump, uh, you know, drum up revenue and, and get people to support and and help pay players, which I think that whole model of how that happens needs to be looked at and changed anyways. But, um, you know, I think they it's our, our athletic department's job right now is to try and go out and, and do some fundraising and be able to keep kids. I know, you know, we did, we did that for Lamont Butler on the basketball side of thing when, when he was getting offers to go some other places and we tried to take care of him. I think the net has to be, you know, cast a little bit bigger. I know there's a lot of people in San Diego. You see it when, when the Padres were rolling, right. Two years ago, they were, they were all in on them. I think if we can get to a point to where we're winning enough, I think people are going to financially help support the program to keep building it, especially since we're really the only option for football, um, you know, at that, at that level in, in San Diego County. Yeah, no, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, regardless who you wanted as a coach, right. Regardless of where you wanted to go, this is our guy. Everyone needs to be bought in the fans, the AD, the marketing. We just need to, you know, go. I know as being alumni, I'm going to win some damn football games. I want to go back to my old stadium or old, you know, program and watch a team that's winning, bring that winning culture back. That's what we all want. And that's why we're all on this call, because we want to see the city win. Well, after the Chargers left, you know, after the down years we've had, it's been tough. But, you know, let's all just buy in then. You know, whatever Aztec Link is, whatever that is for the fans, whatever they can do to contribute. I think the way that regardless of its monetary, the way you can contribute first and foremost is put your butt in the seat week one. And let's let's ride with this program and try to win some football games. I mean, yeah, I think what you guys said is true. I mean, how many times can they do meet the meet the players? You know, like I think one thing you can do to like kind of make the city uh, closer to your to your team is make sure they know who those players are. You got to get them up. You got to get them up on the board billboards. You got to make you got to make the city proud of them. They got you know they got to do it with their play too. But you you know like those guys that are mega millionaires and all that stuff, you got to make them feel comfortable with these guys too. You got to make them, you got to make them want to spend some money, man. Like at the end of the day, like football is, you know, is the greatest sport on earth. Um, but you got to do some things, you know, like that helps with that. As far as like putting your players in front of people, giving them, giving the fans something that they can be happy about. And when you do those things, you're gonna have a lot of success. Want to close this out, Paul? Yeah, just uh, thank you guys for taking some time. Um, you know, this is after everyone's doing it at the end of their day and all that kind of stuff. So really appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time. And congratulations on all the success that you had this year. Um, obviously, on the field, with doing all those things that you talked about, graduating kids and and uh, moving to the next level and being, you know, influencing young men. Um, there's not enough people who do that like you all. And so, you know, congratulations on that. And again, really thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you having us. Have a good night, guys. Hey guys, Merry right, Christmas. Thanks. Happy holidays. Same, same to you guys. See you guys. All right. All right, guys. That was the roundtable discussion with Christian Chapman, Kellen Cobbs, and Jason Carter. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as Paul and I did getting it scheduled and having a chance to chat with these three uh, excellent head coaches and members of the San Diego football community. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys for listening. You know, whatever platform you're using to listen or watch, please uh, like or subscribe or follow us on that channel. Um, it'll definitely help us know that other people are listening, are watching. Please uh, share with any of your uh, San Diego State fan, friends, family, members. Uh, we'd appreciate that as always. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Listening to the SDSU podcast presented by the East Village Times with your hosts Andre Hagberdian and Paul Garrison.